in today's show with Hurricane Durian. At least 44 people dead. The number is expected to soar dramatically as the Bahamas continues to reel from the devastation wrought by Hurricane Durian last week. More than 70,000 on Grand Bahama and the Abaco Islands have been left homeless. Hundreds, possibly thousands, remain missing. As the Bahamas faces this unprecedented destruction, the island nation archipelago has been described as ground zero for the climate crisis. Despite this, the mainstream media has largely omitted any mention of global warming in its coverage of the disaster. A study by Public Citizen found the country's leading print publications devoted 363 articles to Dorian, but only nine mentioned climate change. Another study by Media Matters in the first week after Dorian hit, from August 28th to September 5th, found that of the 216 segments aired on the main television networks on Dorian, only one mentioned climate change. For more, we go to Washington, D.C., to speak with Allison Fisher, Outreach Director of Public Citizens Climate and Energy Program. Allison, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, you have the uh, broadcast networks, you know, ABC, NBC, CBS, and you have the uh, cable networks, you know, not only talking about Fox, but talking about CNN and MSNBC as well. Nonstop coverage, the lead up to Dorian and, of course, the crisis of what happened um, in the Bahamas. But almost never a mention of climate change. Talk about this. Yeah, that's right. So we we actually looked at four days of coverage, and that included the lead up to uh, the the storm ha making landfall in the Bahamas. Um, and what we found was uh, the major TV news programs um, and the major uh, papers across the country, um, with few exception, connected the intensity of the storm with our increasingly warming climate. So specifically, just to give you some of those numbers to see how, how, how few we're talking about, um, just 7 percent of the TV networks made the link between climate change and this particular hurricane, um, and even less uh, in the newspapers, just uh, eight of the papers that, um, that covered, uh, that did Dorian coverage, made that link. Um, so. You know, if you are an American that is turning to one of these sources, um, whether it be ABC or NBC, or your major uh, your major paper in your in your state for information, you are not hearing what the scientific community wants you to know, which is the climate crisis is making these storms um, much much more uh, dangerous and, and in some cases deadly. Um, and Amy, unfortunately, this is not in. Uh, isolated incidents, we can very easily substitute Doreen, Dorian for a Hurricane Michael um, or, or Harvey or Florence or even uh, unprecedented wildfires, 500-year storms, uh, record-breaking heat waves, and we would be having the same conversation and making the same critique, which is when climate-fueled uh, extreme weather events happen. By and large, the media is not talking about climate, and it's precisely the moment when they should be. How often do they have climate scientists on, Allison? Very rarely. Um, we looked at um, we've we've looked at all of the extreme events that have happened in the last couple of years, and very rarely are they bringing people into the studio to communicate the science. Um, and this is very problematic. The, actually, the papers are doing a little bit better um, with quoting. Uh, the the most up to date science and scientists, but the TV networks are are not bringing in communicators. And what's very problematic, and possibly the reason why they're not making the connection, is because they're not familiar with the science. Um, so you have, uh, you know, you have them shy about making the connection, hesitant to make the connection, and then failing to bring in people that can actually communicate and have the credibility to talk to the American people about this issue. So it's, it's a problem all the way around. Interestingly, uh, Chad Myers, the CNN meteorologist, who, if people watch CNN, they see him on all the time, and, of course, the meteorologists are constantly on during this storm coverage. He just recently wrote a piece, I am a CNN meteorologist. I used to be a climate crisis skeptic. And he talked about how he's transforming, although it's not reflected as much, I must say, on the network, which, I mean, it, the meteorologists um, in Europe, when we covered the U.N. Climate Summit, um, there are groups of meteorologists 
who are demanding that their fellow and sister meteorologists start raising the issue of climate crisis that they do in their coverage. You had Heidi Cullen, who is at the Weather Channel, who, um, when she raised this issue, was basically forced out. Yeah, there's been a number of uh, a number of reports that have come out um, about the relationship between the American people and their meteorologist, the person that tells them about the weather, and they're one of the most trusted sources on TV. And so it's it's extremely important that they're the ones that are communicating um, the dangers of climate change and giving context to these extreme weather events to let people know that that's exactly what we're experiencing. Um, there's certainly some some fear out there um, that having this conversation and the meteorologists having this conversation with their audiences is is uh, polarizing and and can be seen as politicizing the issue, and it's really not. Um, it's it's really the exact moment to not be talking about the politics, but be talking about the science and normalize that and have that be a bigger part of the conversation. Can you talk specifically about how the President Trump denying climate change has had an effect on media coverage, even though you have the networks outside of uh, the network that um, he considers his home, Fox, so he's been critical of it lately, um, CNN, MSNBC, critical of him in so many other ways, again, rarely raising the issue of the climate crisis in their, con you know, their regular meteorological coverage, weather coverage? Yeah. Uh, by and large, the, the media is not holding President Trump uh, accountable for his climate denial or for his in inaction, for that matter. Um, mostly what, what happens is when he makes a comment about these these events, the story becomes about him, and it becomes about the thing that he said. And again, it deflects away from the conversation that uh, the media, whether it be the network news or the local papers the, or the Bader they papers, spend much more should time be talking having. about his magic marker and falsely saying Alabama would be hit than about the critical issue of climate crisis. Allison Fisher of Public Citizen, thanks so much. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.